Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Carr. I'm coordinator for the Coastal Marine Ecosystem-Based Management Tools Network. Um, this webinar today is, is also co-sponsored by OpenChannels.org. And we'd like to welcome everyone today. Uh, we're very pleased to have with us today uh, Pasquale uh, Orvino Pagano and Gianpaolo Coro, who are with the Italian National Research Council. And they're going to be speaking to us today about the iMarine Data E-Infrastructure Initiative for Fisheries Management and Conservation of Marine Living Resources. And uh, we're very glad they could be with us today. This is after work hours for them. Uh, so we're glad they were willing to do it. Before we get started, I just wanted to let uh, everyone know uh, we'd like this to be an interactive uh, um, webinar. And so there's two ways you can ask questions. There's a virtual hand icon in the user interface. You can raise your virtual hand uh, to be unmuted if you want to ask a question directly to Lino and jean -Paul, or you can um, type the question into the question panel in the user interface, and then I'll relay it to the presenters. Um, we, and so you can go ahead and send questions in uh, at any point uh, during the webinar, and some we may hold till the end, the question and answer period at the end, although some we may, uh, we may address during the presentation itself. Um, but anyway, welcome everyone, and, and welcome Lino and Sean Paolo. I'll turn it over to you now. OK. Thanks, Sarah. So let me start. Um, by presenting ourselves in such a way that also you can figure out, you know, our faces. So I am Pasquale Pagano. I am a master's degree in computer science and a PhD in information engineering on distributed systems. Um, so, and the other presenter will be Gianpaolo Coro, that instead uh, he has a master's degree in physics and cybernetics and a PhD in computer science. You know, the color that I select for this slide are also, you know, important because I, I am only, let me say, the dark side of the uh, marine infrastructure, mainly solving, you know, the issue and, you know, delivering solution, while Gianpaolo is more the front end and he, he discuss with the community and with the users to solve their problem and uh, he helps them, you know, in... Uh, <clears throat> in satisfying, you know, their needs. So, I will start, you know, presenting the concept. Amarin is the initiative. You know, the group of people that lead the initiative, that leads the initiative, and uh, Amarin is currently exploiting uh, an infrastructure uh, that is an operational platform that is named d Science, and the enabling technology the software that we use is named GCube. So in this uh, short seminar, you know, I will present, you know, the three uh, basic, uh, you know, characteristics of the of the initiative, of the operational platform, and of the uh, software system. So let me start with the initiative. Uh, Marine was uh, uh, an initiative that born in 2010 with the group of uh, agency and research institutions that decided, you know, to create uh, this, uh, <clears throat> this initiative. And in November 2011, it officially started, you know, with uh, the contribution of the European Commission through a, an integrated project. So, and uh, starting from November, uh, you know, this project created and is currently operating this data infrastructure to support the principle of the ecosystem approach to fishery management and conservation of marine uh, living resources. The, the project will last since September 2014, but uh, there is already an agreement, you know, to continue the operation of the data infrastructure at least, you know, till April 2016. This, um, uh, uh, this project uh, is mainly about, you know, managing, you know, integrating, you know, agencies and European uh, institutions, research institutions and worldwide research institutions, you know, from four different domains. So from the ocean environment, from fisheries, from biodiversity and from the taxonomy uh, institutes and data providers. You may recognize, you know, some of the acronyms that are in this picture. 
is not maintained, you know, to present it, you, there are only to show that there are, uh, you know, several interactions from uh, uh, different kind of agencies and disputes that usually do not work together. And the idea was, you know, to enable, you know, their cooperation through this uh, different science infrastructure and, um, and uh, through the exploitation of a number of standards for the da data exchange and access. And the enabling technology, you know, to support this was selected in Gcube. The, the initiative is led by the Yammering Board. On the right side of the slide, you see, you know, the core members of, uh, of the Amerin board and then there are also other institutions that uh, participate to the board without voting rights as observers. The idea of this board is, you know, to clearly guide, you know, the, the entire, you know, the vision and the program of the initiative and to supersede, you know, the implementation of two main business cases. One uh, is for the implementation of the European Common Fishery Policy and uh, the second one is to support the, the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization uh, uh, program on deep sea uh, fisheries. And they develop also a governance model and um, during the project and this governance model is the one that will allow us you know, to continue at least until, you know, till uh, April 2016. They also lead the, um, the identification of policies for data sharing and for software sharing across the different institutions. Then, you know, I will briefly introduce the infrastructure. Clearly, I'm a computer scientist, so this is more about uh, my, my activity in this initiative. And I will start, you know, with uh, <clears throat> clarifying what, you know, is intended for the infrastructures. So, infrastructure is a platform enabling researcher, researchers in different locations across the world to collaborate. And uh, across the boundaries, at, across the locations, uh, across, you know, the different technologies. And then there are several characterization of an infrastructure. One is a data infrastructure that is mainly about mainly about promotion and um, of data sharing and consumption. And then there is another one that is a computational infrastructure that is mainly, um, you know, identify mainly uh, infrastructure where, you know, b uh, big amount of computational resources are offered to um, process uh, large data sets. In any case, you know, an infrastructure is mainly a, a platform where, you know, users can, can exploit those resources. And I, even if it is big, you know, it's intended to be just one infrastructure across one administrative domain and, you know, um, managing, you know, a, a common set of policies. In case of different science, instead, <coughs> we, we talk more about, you know, an hybrid data infrastructure because it combines over, you know, 500 software components that are not centralized in a single location and are not managed, you know, by using, you know, the same access policy or the same uh, uh, service level agreement. It's more, uh, you know, a federation of different infrastructures that all together, you know, contribute, you know, to the um, satisfaction of the user requirement. Clearly, from the user point of view, when they access the for science, they cannot recognize that the resources can be provided by a commercial cloud provider, for example, or by another data infrastructure. So, virtually, you know, it appears as a single uh, infrastructure, but it's a bit more complex than this. And everything, uh, you know, in Amarin uh, was born from the user needs. So, in this slide, in the next two slides, I collect, you know, some of the requirements that were collected at the beginning of the project. And these requirements were, you know, formulated by different uh, type, types of users. Uh, so, from managers that, you know, they, they were looking for solution to preserve the data, to backup, you know, to 
uh, or you know, a, a solution to securely deliver their data to well-known set of group of people, and um, or or for um, from data managers that instead that. Uh, you know the needs, and they were looking for solution for managing the full data uh, life cycle, including all steps of the life cycle. So from import, validation, curation, and monetization, publication, and their aim <coughs> uh, was mainly to reduce the cost of data man um, maintenance. You know, for their um, department or agency, and then there were the needs of the users. <clears throat> that instead the scientists and researchers that were looking mainly for way to access data across the different domains or to process this data to mesh up you know data from different domains to analyze big data set or to perform validations and so all these needs were considered at the beginning and they were not considered uh, as isolated the needs of different kind of users, they were not considered disconnected. And for sure, you know, looking at, at all of them, you know, in an integrated way was not uh, trivial. <clears throat> and the solution delivered by Marine is, is an actual solution that satisfied the needs of the users, and, you know, that contributed at the beginning of the initiative. But it's also a solution that uh, is uh, an outlook on the future, you know. And in fact, you know, during these uh, uh, three years now, uh, we were satisfying, you know, more users that were not present at the beginning. And we and now the Amarin data infrastructure is exploited, you know, by uh, also a bigger community with uh, compared, you know, with the one that was expected at the beginning. So it was designed for individual needs, you know, to satisfy individuals, uh, the, the needs of individual, uh, you know, research center or, or agency. However, you know, the solution proved, you know, to, to be able to satisfy the needs of the larger community that is behind, you know, these uh, three uh, different domains, you know, biodiversity, uh, the statistical uh, community, and the, the geospatial one. <laughs> and um, I mean, technically speaking, so uh, different science is geographically distributed in several sites. It's a computing infrastructure that uses resources across the administrative boundaries and across private and commercial providers. This means, you know, that computational resources in different science are provided by research centers like, you know, uh, the, the National Research Center in Italy or by commercial provider, big company in Italy like engineering or, you know, also cloud computing provider like, you know, uh, the, the Microsoft Azure uh, cloud platform, for example. Uh, in terms of uh, service, uh, different sense of all the services that are needed, you know, to manage properly uh, an infrastructure, so services for allocation of the resources for deployment, for monitoring and operation. It has a well-defined, you know, service level agreement and it uh, clearly specifies, you know, the way uh, data are covered by, you know, are protected and um, <clears throat> there is a, a clear, clear governance model, a privacy uh, and attribution model and everything that works, you know, in this trusted network that is a virtual trusted network across, you know, the different uh, resource providers that are currently, you know, contributing to different science. Uh, in terms of key characteristics, you may notice in this, uh, in this list that are, you know, uh, some of them are typical of a cloud, a cloud infrastructure. So, it offers, you know, computational environments dealing with the volume of the data, and uh, it offers an elastic management of those resources in such a way that resources can be assigned, you know, to group of people only when they, uh, those resources are needed. However, you know, there are some specific characteristics that are not so common in other uh, cloud computing infrastructure. First of all, it offers a collaborative environment to support scientific communities. It offers a rich portfolio of application 
to perform access validation and reaching processing sharing and mesh up of the data and then it is equipped with uh, a large set of storage technologies so looking you know in uh, some details, you know, in these key characteristics. First of all, it offers storage as a service to us and maintain data, and uh, including, you know, the standard the relational databases, but also most of the available cloud storage technologies um, that may, may be needed, you know, by, by the community, and it offers also support for scalable geographical databases. So it is equipped, you know, with a special, <coughs> let, let me say, you know, a special equipment, you know, to, ma to manage um, geospatial data in a scalable way. And we know that uh, this is quite an issue, usually. In terms of computing as a service, it, o uh, it offers capabilities, you know, that um, are character uh, character characterized by the fact that they are scalable. There is an elastic assignment of resources, and uh, the, the environment does not support only MapReduce, even if it supports MapReduce through a, a Hadoop, uh, uh, you know, technology, but it supports also output computing, and in particular, to satisfy the needs of this community, support also parallel R, and uh, R is, uh, you know, a framework uh, w that is widely used, you know, by the by, by the uh, biodiversity community. And then it supports a number of applications for the generation of metadata uh, in the three different domains, in geospatial, biodiversity, uh, statistical, in such a way that, you know, they are compliant with standard and for geospatial data with the DSPIRE uh, uh, directive. Uh, tools for harmonization that include, you know, disambiguation, validation, and uh, uh, integrity and consistency check, and uh, for that exchange according you know, to the different protocols. So it supports, you know, uh, all uh, the OGC uh, protocols, and then SDMX for statistical data, and the export in Darwin Core and Darwin Core Archive for the biodiversity data. In terms of uh, the application catalogs, as I told you, there are more than 500 software components, uh, hundreds of different web services. So um, the, the offer, you know, we, we decided, you know, to bundle, you know, to group all these technology in four thematic bundles. One is for the management and interpretation of biological and ecological data, and this is uh, called, you know, BioCube. Then uh, Stats Cube is for the management of uh, the statistical data, <coughs> including you know the, the complete full life cycle uh, for the management of the data. Geos Cube is for the um, management of uh, geospatial information. It includes also uh, web processing service capability. And then finally, Connect Cube is a set of technology that supports you know, uh, sharing of data, reporting, and uh, aggregation and projection. In details, you know, I put some references in this slide with um, the type of framework that belongs you know, to the different bundle, and there are framework for managing you know, observational data, taxonomy data, uh, code list and control of the vocabulary, or tabular data, and so on just for your reference, you know, in the slide. Uh, however, you know, it is not only, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's not only a computational infrastructure and uh, it does not only offer a set of technology, it offers also access to uh, a huge set of, uh, a, 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 of data sets. And <coughs> so it this does not offer only validation, reaching, processing, and sharing of data, and you see here a number of acronyms that you may recognize, like you know, OBIS is the Ocean Biogeographic Information System, WORMS is the World Register of Marine Species, uh, GBIF is the Global Biodiversity Information Facilities, and then there is Catalog Life, but also you know, data uh, access you know, made accessible through my ocean or the World Ocean Atlas and so on. 
the complexity here in you know making all this accessible in a common infrastructure was you know to manage the different policies that you know the different data providers uh, you know have defined and in order to do to to do it uh, you know a number of procedures were implemented were documented through guidelines and all these data are made accessible through standards so i mean the 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 data data sets that are accessible are you know um, huge so here you you see um some examples or a subset you know of the data that are accessible across the you know the different domain starting from the ontology and the data warehouses that are accessible and then the biological and ecological data geospatial data statistical data and then documents reports and textual documents so um and everything here um, is accessible again, you know, only through standard protocols and standard uh, metadata description. <coughs> so, however, I, I mean, uh, this uh, set of capabilities that I presented uh, was not considered enough. So. The idea of creating this ecosystem of uh, participatory data infrastructure that is regulated by policy and enabled by standard and that is not only about accessing the data but also uh, processing and sharing and, and supporting you know mesh up of heterogeneous data was not enough because the idea was you know to put the user or the group of users and you know at the center of this infrastructure in such a way that each uh, each user or each group of uh, each group of users you know could uh, customize the infrastructure according you know to the specific needs uh, his own needs so for this reason it was integrated the virtual research environment framework provided by the gcube enabling technology and this allow uh, this framework allows the creation of um, custom environment, dedicated environment, where it is possible to identify subset of data, services, and also computational storage resources, and everything are, is assigned you know, to a subset of users for a limited time frame and with the, the policy identified by the community manager. And what is more important that this is possible and is affordable because there are no additional costs for the providers of the uh, of the resources so of the participatory data infrastructures and this allows to share and to collaborate sharing here is not only sharing of files but it's also possible to share uh, the workflow it's possible to share, you know, portion of data, for example, tables that are, you know, in databases, or it's possible to share the execution of an algorithm of a model, and um, I mean, everything that is a resource, uh, uh, the user can share it, and then it's possible to communicate and to organize, you know, the content and the communication in a secure, a policy-oriented uh, environment. So, to support the communication, we create an environment very similar or very, um, that is very familiar to the end users that looks like, you know, any other social communication tool like uh, also Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, all these environments. So, um, where it, there is a single place, you know, to manage a communication. The difference is that here the communication is not only uh, limited to feed from users, but there are also feeds from uh, applications, and so uh, it's possible to receive feed, uh, feeds when uh, you know a computation uh, is completed, when a new data set has been published, when a new model has been added to the to the virtual research environment, when um, you know all the different applications you know m make, uh, m made available something. And there is also one place, you know, to manage uh, and, and share data, but again, you know, share resources. But again, here are not only files, but it's possible to share, you know, files clearly, as in Dropbox, for example, but it's possible also to share 
uh, you know, in the same way, a workflow, an experiment that uh, I'm executing, you know, the parameter of my uh, specific uh, algorithm that I'm running, and I can share, you know, with my colleagues, for example. Uh, just one word about, you know, the software, just one slide, and then I will give, you know, the, the <coughs> uh, Gianpaolo will continue the presentation. Uh, as I told you, the entire infrastructure is powered by Gcube. Gcube clearly is not only, is not the only software that runs, but it's mainly the enabling software. Um, it is an open source project r uh, released under the European Union public license. Uh, you see here uh, some statistics um, taken from uh, OpenUp. OpenUp is uh, a service that ranks uh, open source projects. Um, in this, uh, in, in this uh, uh, slide you see you know, some statistics. It was born uh, GQB in 2008, and starting from then, it, it's, it continued to grow. Now it comes more than 10 million lines of code. It's, uh, it's a well-established and mature code base, but what is more important that is there is an increasing uh, year-to-year commits with uh, an increasing number of contributors every month uh, or every year. And so this makes sustainable uh, this large platform. And <clears throat> make possible, you know, to rely an entire infrastructure uh, um, uh, on it. Now, um, there are a few examples of the analytics capabilities of the iMarine, and so I will leave the floor to Gianpaolo. <coughs> well, hello. Okay, let me continue the presentation by Pasquale. And uh, here are some examples of practical usages that uh, our users in different community or practice have uh, um, experienced. And uh, some of them are collaborative and uh, have been collaborative. Some other mainly pointed to uh, give our users more efficiency about uh, their own developed models. So I will give you uh, some practical examples. We have uh, basically divided the examples into four categories uh, uh, that are that mainly um, will talk about uh, uh, various functionalities that we host in the infrastructure or that we currently host because we integrated the procedures and the methods developed by our community of practice. So the first set of facilities is uh, ge the geospatial and regards geospa geospatial analysis and in particular we host uh, uh, very basic um, features, functionalities to rasterize maps um, so that if you have a polygonal map uh, reproducing the species possible presence in the ocean, we can transform our method can methods can transform this polygonal map into a point map, so basically rasterizing the map. So on top of this, we have built several other facilities. One, for example, that is able to perform maps comparison. So if you have two very different maps, one, uh, one on the right side is a raster map and one on the left side is a polygonal map, uh, one of our algorithms uh, can uh, perform this comparison in order to give you an overall, sorry, an overall um, similarity, uh, similarity assessment between these two maps. So in this case you see directly that the, the algorithm assesses that the similarity is fair. So going next, the same is for uh, signal processing applied to geospatial data because we can apply several um, methods uh, to extract the, the time trend, the, the, the trend in time of a certain environmental parameter like temperature and by means of Fourier analysis we can extract the hidden periodicity in the signal. 
The same is for uh, non-uniformly sampled uh, signals like uh, uh, the reports of earthquakes in which we have facilities to resample the signal uh, and then to retrace the spectrogram in order to detect the hidden periodicity, the hidden periodic phenomena in uh, this, um, in this uh, signal. Uh, another facility um, is able to extract information on uh, uh, about the water column. So if you fix the time instant and uh, one point uh, on uh, in, in latitude and longitude, we can retrieve uh, all the uh, information about uh, a certain <coughs> environmental feature along the, wa the water column. For what regards ecology, and, uh, and we mean uh, the interaction between species and uh, the uh, abiotic conditions of their envir living environments, we have several facilities. Uh, the first ones uh, are for, niche, for to perform niche modeling, and in particular we host several uh, methods belonging to the AquaMaps approach. In this case you see um, an image reporting the, the suitable habitat for the Atlantic cod. And there are several alternatives to perform, to, dis, to produce this kind of models. And this is uh, what, uh, what is called niche modeling. So for what regards outliers detection, <clears throat> basically we have, uh, if you have presence points for a certain species, we have facilities to search for these presence points in uh, several, um, from several uh, repositories of uh, uh, occurrence records for species and we basically can uh, uh, automatically detect outliers by using clustering analysis that can be based either on, dense, on the density of the points or on their distance. These are alternative methods, the ones you see here. For what regards biodiversity, we have, I'm going to show you uh, several examples uh, uh, that uh, come out from uh, a very tight collaboration with uh, our community of practices. So this is not only about computer science, but also about uh, integrating uh, users and expert experience in our, into our systems. So the first example is this, in which uh, we report the, in some sort of climate uh, changes effect on species distribution. On the left side you see the trend of uh, the overall occupancy for a set of more than 11,000 species over 20 years. So you see depicted the overall occupancy by this species in time, also estimated up to 2036. And on the other side, on this right part, you see uh, instead that uh, the analysis can focus on, on one single species and can report the estimated trends for uh, several FAO area. So in this you see that the species is going to increase and this, uh, in this other chart you see that the species is likely to be, uh, the species presence, presence is likely to be oscillating. So we can also calculate the similarity between two habitats uh, for a certain species. So if you have two habitats described in terms of uh, uh, a set of environmental features, this uh, habitat representativeness score is a model that we host in the infrastructure that uh, uh, has been applied also to produce some papers in order to detect uh, the similarities between two habitats in which uh, you know that uh, um, uh, one certain species uh, can live. In this case uh, we focused uh, on the cell account. For what regards uh, the processing of occurrence records, so presence points for certain species, uh, we host several algebraic operations uh, uh, that uh, uh, are able to intersect uh, or merge two occurrence uh, uh, data sets. And these merging, these algebraic operations are made uh, on the top of uh, spatial considerations, so in terms of longitude and latitude, as well as uh, on uh, uh, distance in time between two observations and also, also on uh, lexicographic distances between some metadata like authorship and uh, a scientific, the scientific name of the species. 
going forward, another tool that has been developed in collaboration with uh, uh, bi some biologists uh, acting in uh, iMarine is Bionim. Bionim uh, is uh, a workflow that uh, uh, basically is a, a cascade of uh, expert systems, each one integrating uh, some, uh, a certain kind of expert knowledge about uh, taxonomic, search, taxonomic name search. So if you have uh, one string that you want to understand, uh, one string referring to a scientific name of, of a species, uh, you can check for the correct transcription, you can retrieve the correct transcription of this scientific name by looking at uh, the record, the records inside uh, some reference sources. And each of these matches that you see here uh, incorporate expert knowledge that performs uh, uh, one different kind uh, of, um, uh, of search into these reference sources. In collaboration with UNESCO, in, instead, we developed this Trendilizer application. Trendilizer is a standalone application running on the infrastructure that is able to, um, to produce trends for species presence in the oceans and also for changes in, about changes in the biodiversity configuration of certain, of certain areas. Indeed, uh, we also um, have included some uh, data analysis and data mining procedures in order to account for the usual sampling biases that are very common in a large uh, repository for species presence points. Uh, one final point regards life history traits. So in this case, we face uh, the, um, well, some uh, laws uh, in the nature, we address laws in the nature and modeling these uh, uh, nature laws um, by using data mining and uh, statistical modeling facilities. Life history traits is a trend of iMarine that uh, uh, on one side tries to incorporate expert knowledge about uh, um, species uh, growth, uh, species uh, evolution also. And on the other side, we also contribute with new models by our side. Or by our side. And here are some uh, practical examples. The first is about the length weights relationship uh, estimation for more than 14,000 14, species. In this case, uh, we uh, calculated these A and B parameters that link the weight and the length of a species for uh, a certain number of, of species. And we, uh, in this case, uh, the, the model came from uh, the GEOMAR Institute um, that is located in Kiel and contributes to um, iMarine as a, as a stakeholder. And in this case, the model came from them and we incorporated their R scripts, run them, uh, executed them in parallel fashion. And uh, the result was that uh, uh, they gained a time reduction with respect to their usual uh, ex execution from that uh, came, went from 20 days to 11 hours. So they had a bi very big reduction using and a very practical uh, benefit using Gymarine in this case. More uh, collaborative uh, um, approaches uh, were applied in uh, uh, this case uh, in which uh, uh, <clears throat> the scientists wanted to, wanted to estimate this trend for uh, uh, a, cert a set of uh, uh, st uh, stocks in of commercial interest, and uh, um, in this case we applied uh, some of uh, our Bayesian models, the, the models that we uh, yet host in the infrastructure in order to combine expert knowledge with the real data and to estimate this, uh, the, the, well, the, the health status of these 50 stocks. The last example uh, that uh, is uh, still ongoing but uh, um, is more collaborative indeed um, regards uh, uh, the, the, the calculation of the resilience and productivity pair, the best resilience and productivity values for a certain uh, species. 
and this is uh, the, the, in this case we use the uh, Monte Carlo methods and Markov chains uh, models that uh, are currently hosted by the statistical features of the infrastructure in order to filter out points, uh, that, uh, suitability points, uh, pairs for uh, a certain species. So this is a practical application that uh, tries to estimate the maximum sustainable yield for uh, certain uh, uh, stocks. So. Uh, after this uh, uh, rapid show reel, um, we want to focus on uh, the exploitation of our models because the infrastructure, also the show reel, shows that the infrastructure can be exploited at several levels. So one is uh, at the infrastructure level, so um, for, for uh, uh, communities that want uh, to host their data or to exploit the sharing facilities that uh, Pasquale has talked about and uh, uh, they want to use uh, our security monitor and fa monitoring facilities so they won't become part of the infrastructure by contributing also with data, for example. Otherwise, they could use uh, uh, the software that we host in infrastructure, and I mean uh, applications that are ready to use for our, um, for our stakeholders, as well as models that can be uh, employed in, uh, in other experiments. And finally, uh, they could use the infrastructure as a platform, development platform, if they want to contribute in terms of software uh, to enrich the, the infrastructure or they want to comp contribute uh, with new services that could exploit the other resu the resources that are, yer are yet hosted by the infrastructure uh, so that they want to enrich the, infra the infrastructure with new services and facilities. So, so this regards more um, a more um, development framework to contribute to the infrastructure. So these are some links uh, to the infrastructure if you want to uh, learn more. So I could try to give you a very rapid example of uh, an interaction with the infrastructure. So if you Okay, if you can see, if you can still see my screen. Yes, we're still seeing your screen. Okay. This is the iMarine gateway in which uh, we, you can find several virtual research environments, uh, each one collecting uh, a different, one different uh, um, subset of our community. One of these is the biodiversity lab that we also use for our training uh, classes. Among these you have the processing tools uh, that host, uh, hosts many of our facilities for data processing and uh, for example here you have the list of uh, uh, the algorithms that we host that are categorized so for example you can uh, have uh, details about data clustering facilities uh, this is the interface for uh, uh, um, uh, to, to set up the experiment, to uh, feed the experiment with uh, input parameters and to execute the experiment. The interface is self-maintained because, uh, self because it is automatically generated uh, by reading the input and the outputs uh, of the algorithms. Uh, in this, in this uh, part you can uh, explore the yet produced computation and also retrieve uh, uh, the, the summary of uh, the, the parameters that were used for this computation, parameters that you can also share with other people uh, and speak because this, all the, the, the systems, uh, this system uh, also aims to uh, reproduce the experiment, so to make experiments uh, be reproduced also by other colleagues 
so that you can share uh, data sets as well as the parameters of the experiment. In, indeed, uh, there is the, this data space facility that uh, basically um, clusters and uh, collects all the data sets that have been produced by the algorithms uh, or uh, that have been imported on the platform by the user. So uh, there is a, a rich set of uh, tutorials uh, to use this, uh, this facility that, that you can discover uh, through the iMarine portal. So there, there is the importing facility to, uh, for example, import uh, files, import new data sets, and uh, this icon allow users to share or to uh, visualize the contents of, uh, a, certain, um, of a certain data set. Some other facilities uh, allow people to, to uh, retrieve occurrence records for species. For example, in this case, I can search for, uh, for uh, the white shark uh, occurrences and uh, after a while will retrieve um, some data sets uh, containing occurrence records. Otherwise, uh, here uh, we have the Trendalyzer system that was developed in collaboration with UNESCO, I was talking about uh, previously, and uh, otherwise uh, f facilities to explore the data, uh, the, the geospatial data that we host in uh, the infrastructure. So you, uh, if we, you, we, we have uh, um, this interactive map to explore the maps that have been produced uh, maybe by means of a certain model of a certain model uh, through the processing tools. So this is a very rapid uh, um, show of our capability and uh, so now we are open to questions. Okay, wonderful. And just to remind everyone how to send questions, um, you can type them into the question panel of the user interface, or you can raise your virtual hand and I'll unmute you. Uh, this option only works if you have a working microphone uh, or if you're on the phone, if you've entered your, your, your um, PIN number. So uh, let's see, the first question, um, what does it cost to develop the existing infrastructure and, and, and also what does it cost to maintain it? Uh, what is the cost of maintenance? Um, so, as I told you, you know, Imarine is exploiting um, different science, and the idea is to make economy of scale. So, uh, since you know the, the same infrastructure is also exploited by other infra, uh, by other initiatives and, pro and projects. Clearly, everything you know, respect you know, to to the privacy and uh, you know, control of access and so on. So, um, and, and there is this um, uh, you know, this way we are making an economy of a scale at the level of uh, exploitation of the resources. And the same is for the software, since uh, it is an open source uh, community developing the software, and so there are m many, many organizations that are contributing to it, not necessarily, you know, belonging to MRIN, but, you know, belonging also to other organizations, other projects, and so on. Then, you know, uh, if you are looking, you know, for the exact numbers, you know, in terms of the euros or dollars and so on, uh, th there is a document, you know, in, uh, that uh, evaluates, you know, the cost assessment of the operation of iMarine. However, um, uh, I don't know if it is yet public or if it will become public, you know, soon in terms of operation. I don't know if... Um, in some way, I answered your question. Okay. Well, I mean, everything was done. You know, sorry if I interrupt you. Everything was done. You know, to make you know the operation of uh, to operation of a large infrastructure sustainable and affordable. So there was a lot of effort spent. You know, in reducing the cost of operation. So I can tell you, for example, for the operation of the for science. Um, uh, that is, you know, quite large in terms of, of computational resources and storage that we provide access to. There is only one uh, full-time employee, and this is, you know, very low compared, you know, to similar infrastructure 
you know, operated by by other organization, and the same was for the operation of the applications and so on. Okay, well, if, that, if, if that's the way you're able to quantify it, then that, that is helpful. Okay, um, and let's see. Um, another. This is both a comment and a question. Uh, so, uh, the, the the participant says, "I'm flagging an observation," and, and then a question to the presenters. It seems uh, that a, that the social sciences are missing from the data. Exploitation of fisheries is connected to the economy and society in terms of food and diet global trade and policy instruments that govern people for conservation objectives. Uh, are there any plans to include the social sciences data and analysis? Yes, sorry. <clears throat> well, um, this effort is quite uh, complicated to, to manage because uh, you know that communities are made up of uh, several actors, uh, each one having uh, uh, its own uh, policy, and uh, each one pushing in one direction on, on the other. So we support uh, scientists indeed, and we support also their discussion. So uh, first of all, we are uh, experimenting more in data uh, mining uh, in, well, uh, in the direction of life is rich rates, because much of uh, that uh, much of uh, that work goes uh, uh, into the direction of estimating the maximum sustainable yield. So to uh, to try to understand if the current situation, the, the current health status of uh, some stocks, large stocks of commercial interest, is compatible with uh, the kind of fishing activity they are doing. So uh, the, we carry on the analysis, uh, and then the analysis is discussed or rejected by some other, or some of our partners. But essentially, the platform is open also to this kind of activity, and, and is currently supporting that. Um, so, um, okay. I don't know if uh, well, I don't know if I have uh, answered to your question. I, I, th I think so. Th thank you, Jean Paul. And uh, if if the questioner wants uh, to ask a follow up. Feel free to write it in. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, there was a question: How does the iMarine Registry access the data systems that it brings together, uh, such as OBIS and GBIF? Does iMarine maintain a copy or a cache of the data, or does it access it on demand from the sources? Um, Pasquale speaking now. So it's not always possible to maintain a copy of the data. Uh, this is not possible, for example, for OBIS, according, you know, to the OBIS uh, policy. Uh, so we access on demand most of the data sets that are included, you know, that are reported in the slides. In uh, when possible, because it's supported, you know, by by their policy, we we have a cache. We create a cache on demand, you know, with the different li lifetime. And in other cases, we host, uh, you know, also the databases, you know, their database, you know, an exact copy of the database. So mainly it depends not on the technology, because we support all cases, you know, from hosting, accessing, or caching, you know, the data, but, you know, by the policy of the different data providers. Okay, that's great. That's very helpful. Thank you. And let's see, another question. So for a user group with no previous experience with this infrastructure or connection with iMarine, but lots of data, what would be the process for making use of this? Uh, setting up your own node, becoming a partner, something else? Uh, sorry, there was some noise on, on the line, so I missed the initial part of um, your question. Yes, OK. So for a user group with no previous experience with this infrastructure, okay. infrastructure and, and no connection with iMarine, but uh, a user group that has a lot of data, what would be the process for making okay. use of iMarine? Yes. So uh, on the last slide, I, I put also an email address, uh, you know, to show you again. Um, this is for to, you know, send them a request 
to our communication manager, and you know, for this kind of request. So there are several ways, you know, to join MRIN. An organization or a group of users may request access, uh, you know, to become observer or core member of the MRIN board. In this case, you know, their participation is intended, you know, to collaborate to the, the identification of, uh, of, you know, standards for data sharing, you know, for policy definition and so on. So to have, you know, a vote in the Amarin board that, as I told you, you know, leads this uh, initiative. Or otherwise, it's possible instead, you know, to join the infrastructure and uh, no technical requirements, you know, no technical constraints are, you know, really present. So it's possible to create um, a virtual research environment and so to access one of the capabilities of the infrastructure or it's possible to, uh, to, um, to host, you know, to, to manage an entire community. And um, so on the Amarin website um, that is accessible at uh, the first link, there are all options, you know, described, you know, all uh, the, the different ways possible to exploit infrastructure as a single user, as a group of users, as a community, or as an organization wishing, you know, to join the board. Okay, wonderful. Uh, uh, just, uh, sorry, another comment, maybe it's obviously. Um, I mean, the exploitation of the resources is, is currently guaranteed for free, so there is no fee to pay. Uh, you know, in most, uh, almost all the cases that we support are the different organizations that are supporting the communities. Okay, oh, thank you, Jean. Okay. Um, let's see, and there, another question. How well are invertebrates incorporated into the BioCube bio uh, database? For example, sea life base is far behind fish base in overall inclusion. Well, indeed we are currently hosting the official version of uh, fish base and sea life base, so they completely, they have completely, um, we, we have the official copy uh, of uh, these two repositories uh, directly hosted in the, in the infrastructure. So. Um, basically, uh, when you access to fish base or sea, or sea life base, uh, most probably you are accessing uh, our uh, databases, so uh, we have a very tight connection with them. Okay. So, in, in, so I, I think the answer to the user's comment is it's, uh, invertebrates are incorporated to the extent that they are incorporated, like to, to the extent yes. that they're covered in sea life base. Okay. Yes. Yes. And uh, we have one last question right now. Um, can you describe how data quality attributes are used to help mash up sets defensibly? Well, um, what do you mean for data quality in this case? And I'm not sure. So actually, um, Tom, if you want to write in any clarifications for this question. Uh, because we, um, we manage data quality at several stages because every subgroup and sub-community uh, um, uh, in iMarin has a, a, its own requirements for data quality. For, for example, FAO uh, has the need to uh, assess uh, catch statistics with respect to uh, official lists that are host that are called the code lists and are hosted uh, by FAO. So the uh, so data must be checked against that references. On the other side, for biodiversity data, we have that Bionim facility, uh, the one that I've told uh, that uh, I've, I've shown uh, previously, uh, that uh, basically allows users uh, to check. Uh, their name, so it is more oriented to checklists uh, and uh, taxa names, uh, reconciliation. Uh, if you want to uh, check with respect to a reference uh, repository, to a reference taxonomy, 
if uh, your scientific name is correct or if it is uh, an accepted name so and this is uh, another aspect of uh, data quality that we that we manage and for each of these aspects uh, we host uh, one one solution in this case i don't know with, uh, to which you were referring okay and actually the, the the person who sent in that question said this is very helpful the information you provided Ah, so thank you very much, Jean-Paul. So I, I think there is a, a question because there is a, a hand uh, uh, reason, and uh, also uh, Pasquale wants to add uh, something. Um, I forget to say before, you know, uh, in w to add, you know, one of the questions before that in order to also. Uh, help you know in the sustainable exploitation of food. We made uh, iMarine made you know a, a a mobile app, a mobile application named Applyfish that you can download from um, uh, you know for iPhone and Android. And for 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 any commercial fish, it reports you know uh, important information all in in terms of. Uh, um, their uh, resilience and their classification uh, according, you know, to the IOTC red list that, uh, you know, reports if the, the species is in danger, if it is, you know, in danger of, uh, um, uh, of um, I don't remember the term, okay, or, you know, uh, so this, uh, the, the intention, uh, you know, through Applefish was, you know, to make more, uh, you know, to disseminate more knowledge about, you know, the, 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 the fisheries and, and so uh, to simplify to, to act the access to this information that otherwise is a bit complex uh, to digest for a normal user, not for an, ex an expert. Okay. So if you wish, you can also, you know, download, you know, this Applefish. Okay, thank you, Pasquale. Um, uh, Oscar uh, then typed in his question, and it, it sounds like it's on, it may be something that would be best if he gets in touch with you about. Um, it's about Chilean fisheries data, um, and so Oscar, I'd encourage you to get in touch with uh, Pasquale and Sean uh offline. Um, do you? Ha we got we got three more questions uh, in the last few minutes. Do you have a few more minutes, and we could do? Uh, at least a couple of those. If not, yes. if you need to go, then. yes, okay. yes, we can. Okay. Um, another question that came in: Are there any plans to incorporate ecological classification or models beyond the habitat niche modeling? Yes, sure. Um, we are now incorporating uh, ecological models as far as the come from the community so in the context of I marine we have mainly de dealt with uh, uh, with um, niche modeling but we also consider uh, clustering uh, uh, and um, also uh, anomalies detection in um, in occurrence records reporting has anomalies and uh, as uh, uh, models, so uh, in, we make them, um, um, we consider them part of ecological modeling. And there is a large part uh, on which I went fast that uh, is uh, is uh, um, behind uh, that trendilizer system that I've shown that regards the definition of common species because uh, you know that uh, there, there is no an analytical definition of, for a species to be common in a certain area. And this is another model that we have developed and uh, that currently UNESCO is uh, exploiting in, uh, in uh, OBIS. Uh, so we are collecting all these kind of models uh, and uh, so uh, we, we implement that them or we reuse the models that we currently host as far as we have uh, um, we, we have um, uh, the, the requests coming from uh, specific requests coming from uh, our community of practice. Okay, thank you, Jean-Paul. Uh, let's see, and 
a question. Uh, is there any standard data structure implemented in the system, for instance, to share data between two modeling platforms? Well, <clears throat> it depends on uh, uh, the application because, generally speaking, we have a common uh, uh, file system, like we say, that uh, we call uh, uh, the workspace. It acts uh, as a common file system that uh, uh, every user accessing to iMarine uh, is endowed with. So if you register to the iMarine portal, uh, every, everyone can register to the iMarine portal, then you, can, you, you will have uh, uh, this workspace area. The workspace area is uh, used by all the application to store data for example, tables are stored on the workspace in, uh, in the format of uh, CSV files. And once uh, you have uh, uploaded uh, from your local system or from an application a data set onto the workspace, you can share this uh, uh, data set with other people. So that uh, we currently use this common file system to share uh, general purpose data. Otherwise, applications uh, can uh, share uh, uh, very specific formats for some data sets. For example, uh, data sets uh, regarding uh, occurrence records are uh, usually exchanged in, uh, uh, under Darwin Core format. So we, we strongly encourage uh, our users and the developers uh, to use standards as far as possible. But what regards uh, geospatial data, we only rely on uh, OGC standards. That means that every uh, layer is uh, exposed in uh, WMS format, WFS, or in other OGC standard formats. And we are going and we are pushing on being compliant also with uh, INSPIRE specifications for uh, metadata uh, regarding this geospatial uh, data. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, and for statistical data, we uh, strongly use as the SDMX, that is uh, uh, very, uh, we're very useful and quite largely used the format for a statistical uh, data exchange. Yes, are you there? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, thank you so much, <laughs> thank you, Jean Paul. Um, and one last question. Is it possible to integrate new software tools in the iMarine software infrastructure? I saw it has an R statistics software environment. Is it possible on request to add new R packages? Uh, hmm. Also, a number of scientists use not only R, but also Python as a scientific software environment. Are there any plans to integrate software like uh, IPython Notebook into iMarine? So, uh, well, there are two, uh, I, I think this question is, um, can be divided into two parts. One is for integrating a software coming from, uh, R scripts, for example, coming from uh, users. So we, we currently have uh, uh, web uh, uh, interfaces with R uh, integrated development environments that uh, a user can, uh, can use. So uh, we uh, at, at first instance, if uh, someone wants to to uh, introduce uh, his code into iMarine, and uh, if, if he wants to, uh, if he wants our services to exploit uh, his code, uh, then he can use our uh, integrated development uh, environments for R. And uh, once uh, the application, and if the application uh, the, the, that runs on that environment that is based on uh, RStudio that is largely a, very, a largely used uh, uh, development environment then we are certain that uh, the uh, the code will run or on our system uh, furthermore the system is flexible enough to accommodate for some very hard uh, problems re uh, regarding uh, related to scripting scripting uh, um, uh, software, scripting uh, uh, languages, that is uh, the dependency on the operating system and the dependency on the version of the interpreter to use, for example. 
and uh, our system is uh, uh, going towards uh, the the scenario in which uh, uh, it selects the most suited environment for the uh, to run the to execute the the, the script. So it will. Uh, select uh, the most suited machine and also interpreter to execute the, uh, the, 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 the R script. For what regards uh, uh, other kind of, uh, of languages, uh, well, uh, the computing platform uh, is quite, well, is based on, is Linux based. So if you have a compiled program, it can run on these machines because the machines uh, have the options uh, the option to run uh, uh, to run compiled programs uh, as they were external programs so they uh, they use uh, uh, the, the the sandbox approach the sandbox approach in which uh, uh, software is uh, um, copied into these sandboxes and uh, executed locally, so uh, this prevents software to uh, to do damages to the system uh, possibly, uh, but it also um, enables compiled programs to be run uh, as they were external programs. So it is a bit difficult to completely answer to this question uh, in terms of words, uh, uh, but so uh, we have a public just. Uh, almost published the paper on uh, on our uh, on uh, the, the way in which our platform deals with this problem. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, no, that was, that was uh, uh, very helpful. Uh, and and thank you both. Uh, we'll wrap up now. Thank you so much f for a great presentation and very uh, for answering quite a few questions. And I think other people will be in touch with you after the webinar uh, with probably more specific questions for their circumstances. Uh, we really appreciate you doing this. And, and thank you to everyone who was able to participate and, and even stay a few minutes after for the rest of the questions. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon, evening, morning, depending on where you are. And uh, thank you again for, for participating in the webinar. Thank you again, Farron. Thank you all for your participation. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.